I guess we should probably at some point talk about your other project you're involved in. Because I had one? A, I Redox. I had a surprising number of people ask, like, I didn't know there were this many people that were interested in it. I, I really didn't. Oh, yeah, of course. No, like, of it's, course. A, it's a really... I, I guess, like, I personally haven't done, like, a ton of research on it myself. So why don't we just start with the basics of what is this project? So uh, Redox OS is a microkernel and a complete full user space that is written primarily in Rust. And that's that's the basics of it. Uh, and the history is that I I needed a first project to do in Rust, and uh, I didn't know how to write a Hello World, but I knew how to write an operating system. So I started there. Um, the first project I wrote in Rust was was I I took somebody's bootloader sample and I added I poured it over all the code from my other operating system into it. So it had a, it had a simple GUI. It had like mouse cursor moving around, keyboard, but it was basically a unikernel. Everything was inside of the bootloader. Mm -hmm. And then I I rewrote the whole thing to to split it up so that uh, and I decided to go from the absolute insane side of unikernel to the absolute insane side of microkernel. So I split it up so that everything was in separate processes. And uh, and uh, it grew from there. Well, I was going to ask you why you made it, but I guess you, <laughs> I guess why I, is a hard question. Yeah. Why, why why does anybody do any programming when we all know that humanity is doomed and probably only has another sixty years before before we're cooked off the planet, mm -hmm. either via climate change or nuclear explosions or something else? Uh, but. Why? Uh, well, it was fun. I needed to learn Rust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why not write an operating system in Rust? And uh, and I, I so my I like friend. I say that is just like a, a casual thing. Why not write an operating system in Rust? That's just you know. I mean, yeah. Why not write a, a tic tac toe program in Rust? Why not write a calculator in Rust? It's just that's... I don't know how to do that. <laughs> how do you even tic tac toe? Game's too complicated. <laughs> that's too complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I feel like the 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 major thing that drew me to it was that um, at the time the only thing that was running in like very low level Rust mm -hmm. was that demo program that I found called Rust Boot. Right. And all it was was to basically be a bootloader and print some text on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well that's interesting. Uh, I'm doing that in assembler. Why don't I try this new language that my friend recommended, who is a Haskell friend, fan because he has a PhD in mathematics um, and he can understand it. Um, and he recommended I look into Rust. At the time, I was very deep into C++ and I was trying to figure out what kind of rules would I need to add to C++ to make it operate the way I wanted. So I, I wrote a specification and a set of scripts called the safe object language. Uh -huh. Boy, was I wrong. It wasn't that safe, but it was safer. It should have been the safer object language. And what it was was basically a set of lints that would run on top of C++ code and say uh, when you did some stupid stuff. And, uh, and I was very very short into this project when he sent uh the link to rust which was still in like alpha stage to me and i took a look at this project and i'm like well wow rust sounds like exactly what i wanted to do but mm -hmm. done a lot better it's already done and it's there and it's ready and <clears throat> so then i started looking around because the only thing i was really having fun with was operating systems at the time so like well where is all the operating system code written in rust Oh, nobody's doing it? This irritates me often. It is a very empty space. There are very mm -hmm. few people actually interested in low-level stuff, and they're all employed. Uh, they're not doing it as a hobby, usually. So it's like uh, you can find a lot of stuff in the open source world, but when you start to look for, for um, operating system stuff, it is just a handful. 
it is a handful of operating systems and they're all written in C. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was like, okay, this, this presents an opening. What if I try to use this language that supposedly has all these wonderful properties and is in, it was in my opinion, even higher level than C++. Although a lot of people would disagree with me. It felt like it was higher level. Mm -hmm. So I was like, how, like, this is wrong. How can you even use this at such a low level? Uh, it, it, it felt, it just felt wrong to me. It felt like I was cheating. Uh, if I, if I were to write all this stuff in Rust and not have to do it in assembler line by line, and every time I add a single instruction, I have to recompile the whole thing and test it because God knows it's, it's impossible to make changes to assembler without making mistakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, it was easy and, and worked well. And I'm like, well, this will scale. I can start to write more things with this. And, and uh, yeah, that's, that's where it came from. I, I just went straight from assembler, visual basic, assembler, with some C++ on the side, but I hated it. Rust. And then that was that was it. I still do a bunch of assembler because you can't really do operating systems without it. But mm -hmm. but yeah, doing so much in Rust and and making it a microkernel and it just scaled very easily. I could I could write a driver for for Redox in in half a day. Mm -hmm. So I had a, a network card that was in one of my old laptops. And this is another thing I love doing with Redox is seeing how old I can get stuff to work. Uh, and it had I had a driver for the RTL eight one six nine, but it had an RTL eight one three nine. So I'm like, okay, I'll write a driver for it. I download the data sheet. In about four hours, the driver was done working, working on the real hardware, uh, and that was it. Uh, it was a new process, new 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 modular component running in user space, uh, no changes to the kernel required, new piece of hardware is supported. Uh, and yeah, it, uh, it, it feels to me like microkernels are, are still the right way to do things, mm -hmm. but nobody has really invested that much time into them outside of research. Mm -hmm. And that, that also irritates me. Just the lack of resources at the lower level and the the heavy investment of resources into high level things and and how can we get rust to run run web server stuff and and run in inside of wasm and things like that and that's got like 99 percent of the entire rust community working on it and i'm over here like hey you guys realize we can use this anywhere it can be at, at low level stuff too mm -hmm. um yeah it's been interesting so Correct me if I'm wrong here on the dates with Wikipedia, but Redox started before the first stable release of Rust. Yes. About a month before the first stable. Jeez, okay. So you've been, like, there from the start, basically. It was a little earlier than that, because the first public commit I have was probably... It was, like, uh, a few weeks after I had started the project. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it was somewhere around April 20th of 2015. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, that's exactly 4, 420 the is a, just a great time to release stuff on 420. <laughs> and, and it also means that the anniversary is right around April Fool's time, too. Mm. So we've had a few April Fool's jokes until everyone decided April Fool's wasn't cool anymore. Yeah, it's no fun. To stop that. I'm the only Too one who bad. makes April Fool's Linux videos. Just, what do you guys yeah. Guys, join in on the fun. Nobody wants to have fun anymore. No, no fun. They just want to complain. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, so I guess that explains why Orb TK was a thing then. Yeah, Orb TK was was a Rust toolkit, pure Rust. Because there wouldn't have been a, a toolkit like when you started. When I yeah, when I started there was very little. I don't <laughs> even think Iced was around. Slint may have been around as sixty FPS, which it was known as before, but Gosh. I don't even know. At that time, I wasn't sure if we could even port other toolkits to Redox. Mm -hmm. There was just it was so different of a system and had so few things to fill filled in. So I had I had a, a window manager called Orbital, and I had a, a, cl a client library called Orb Client, and all the apps at that time were just rendering directly to a frame buffer. 
And then um, Orb TK was to try and wrap that up in a way that was a little easier to interact with. Mm -hmm. And and we used it for a couple applications, but in the end, I just uh, I don't know. I I think I I filled in enough of the GUI stuff that I kind of didn't get have interest in it anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I worked on other parts of the system, especially on driver support, uh, on on making sure Redux booted up on all hardware, on the file system, things like that, porting to new new architectures. The first microkernel version was 32-bit x86. And then it really sucked. And I wiped it all away and rewrote it. And I rewrote it 64-bit x86. Mm -hmm. And then I got so bored with new computers that I added in 32-bit x86 support to it again. So it's been a cycle. <laughs> Wait, why did you get rid of the 32-bit in the first place? Well, it was terrible code, so the kernel had to be rewritten. Fair enough, fair enough. Especially the memory management. It was just uh, too much, too many problems with the memory management. Right. And then that was fixed, and then it was written for x86-64, and then uh, there was a port for ARM, uh, and then there was a port for 32-bit x86, which is... Mm -hmm. Now my favorite platform to work on because I can work with with really old stuff that Linux doesn't support at all. Like you try to you try to run even the most lightweight Linux distribution on my Pentium 2 mm -hmm. computer, it will absolutely not boot. It won't have enough memory to even load up the installer. And then and then you try to run Redox and it runs just fine. And because it's been optimized to fit on that specific hardware. Um, and it runs the same way on a 128 core Threadripper or 128 thread Threadripper, Threadripper processor with 128 gigs of RAM or whatever. So yeah, it's a uh, scalable. Mm -hmm. I, I really like having that aspect that I can write a piece of code and it will run across so many different pieces of hardware. And now I have iced programs running on that Pentium too. It's kind of nuts. Um, because the whole stack has been integrated correctly, where mm -hmm. we have a software rendering fallback and cosmic text is there and just it's optimized for memory usage. So it, it uh, fits well on, on, a, on such a low end system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I know that you, you have um, Sunset uh, Orb TK. Why did you decide to do that? Well, like I said, I was not working on GUI stuff for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And there was some work by some other folks to, uh, to try to uh, modify it, to, to use it. Basically, this company, ErgoDocs, hired someone named Florian Blasius. And right. Florian, um, he, he wanted to modify OrbTK to use in their in their company's products. Wait, I'm, I'm sorry, Ergodox, the, key, the the keyboard company? Oh. Uh, or are we exactly. talking about another Ergodox? It's a different one. Okay, I was going to say, I was very confused for there. Yeah, it is really confusing. I think it might be spelled differently. It might be Ergodoc or something. I don't I even see. remember. He works at Slint now. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, what happened was uh, he, he left that company. He worked at Slint. Nobody was working on Orb TK. So I'm like, OK, you're working at Slint. We already chose Iced as a toolkit because Orb TK wasn't up to the task. Now Redox is going to target these two toolkits. Mm -hmm. So I uh, made sure SoftBuffer and, and Winit, which are two libraries, and Cosmic Text were all working on Redox. And by doing that, I was able to um, I was able to ensure that Iced would run on Redox. Mm -hmm. Slint also could reuse the same libraries, and now it's running on Redox. So now we have the opportunity to port Cosmic applications directly to Redox. So I don't have to write applications specific to Redox, and that means I can actually get paid to write applications that would be ported to Redox. Uh, rather than being interested in other things. For Redox, I'm usually interested in low-level things because I, I feel like we should be bringing in the GUI from, from a third-party source. It, it's not a critical aspect to, to Redox to prove that there can be a Rust GUI. Right. 
It's a critical aspect to prove there can be a rust kernel and rust drivers and, and the low level parts are rust. And uh, if we have a rust thing being developed and being, being paid for by another, another company, why not just bring that in? Mm -hmm. And so now the plan is to try to bring in as many elements of, as from cosmic and uh, written in ice, written in slint, and uh, people are confused about that. And really, it, it, the two options are both equally viable. It's whichever one you prefer. Um, yeah. I know there was a question on on Fostodon or on Twitter about, uh, so for Redox, which one are we supposed to use, iced or slint? <laughs> it's like, well, both. Whichever that's, one the, that's the nature of, ha of finally having enough toolkits. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you're not you're not tied to one and hopefully redox will have much more toolkits to work with in the future.